or sometimes I, 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 I'm amazed. I think about the body language of the, of the disciples as they, you know, probably to this point, you know, there's a certain, you know, I borrow a modern term, there were a certain chillax mode maybe, yeah, one chillax mode and then Jesus opens his mouth and he starts to deliver the Sermon on the Mount. I'm sure that, uh, you know, those that were lying down were like, those that were sitting were standing. They're looking at each other because this is, you know, what is happening here? The teachings of Jesus that we find in the Gospels are the commandments of God stripped of all limitations of the flesh. Listen carefully. The teachings of Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, are the commandments of God stripped of all limitations of the flesh and empowered in their application by the Holy Spirit of grace. And empowered, we are a people that are empowered now. I'll, re I'll repeat that. The teachings of Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, are, com are the commandments of God stripped of all limitations of the flesh. Jesus said that Moses spoke certain things in, in the commandments because of the hardness of your heart. But now because of the work of Christ, the commandments of God are stripped of all limitations of the flesh. Now we operate in the Holy Spirit. Glory. We operate in the Holy Spirit. We operate in the Holy Spirit, an abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, a strengthening presence of the Holy Spirit that we shall do greater things. Praise the Lord that no one born of a woman is greater than one that is born in the kingdom of God. See, church, do you realize your calling? This is the new covenant. Praise the Lord. This is the new covenant this is the new covenant empowered by the holy spirit the sermon on the mount yeah where the pharisees the sadducees when they heard the lord teach the jews when they heard jesus begin this teaching they clearly understood this the sermon on the mount reminds us over and over that the old covenant is a shadow of the new covenant. They understood it's right on. And today I find it, uh, you know, strange that we Christians are getting all confused about these things. The Jews, the teachers of the law understood immediately as they heard the teachings of Christ that this was something that was surpassing. This was something surpassing. Someone greater than Moses is in our midst. The Sermon on the Mount reminds us over and over that the old covenant is shadow of the new covenant. It reminds us, it teaches us that the festivals, the ordinances, law and prophets are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Amen. The festivals, ordinances, law, and prophets are fulfilled in loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. Somebody say, praise God. Fulfilling the law, listen carefully, church. Fulfilling the law is to receive justification in Christ. Fulfilling the law is to receive justification in Christ. Every person seated in this room who has been justified in Jesus Christ has obeyed all the law. And when we understand these scriptures and teachings of Christ, we realize that it is no longer I who live, but Christ. You know, I hope you're not still stuck in the I, you know, in the me, myself, and I. I hope that you are set free. Praise the Lord. Man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for the man. You begin to understand that Jesus has gone to the very, 
the, the very depth of the meaning of what God intended. What did God intend? Listen carefully, church. What did God intend with the commandments, the long lists of ordinances, and the festivals that, that were celebrated? What was his, what did God desire for it to, to manifest? How did he desire for it to manifest? Read the Sermon on the Mount. 